So as you all know, I'm a big believer in solidarity. And that's solidarity between all poor people, basically. And when I say poor people, I mean people who don't think of themselves as poor, but who actually are. And that's really most of us. And of all races, of all creeds, of all faiths, everyone. In this short episode, I'm talking specifically to people of color, especially black folks. We're getting destroyed right now by COVID-19 and by a number of things, but especially COVID-19. And I have heard a couple things today, which really made me realize I need to jump on here and just say a couple things quick. So let's get right into this short episode of the Focused on Infinity podcast. Let's talk about it. So as you're no doubt aware by now, the coronavirus, SARS-CoV-2, whatever you want to call it, is really doing a number on black folks, especially, and Hispanic folks as well, definitely, in numbers that are far out of proportion with our percentage of the general population. And there's a number of factors to this, and I want to just briefly touch on, on all of them. There's obviously the economic factors, right? The average black family has 10 times less wealth than the average white family. And since we don't have any sort of cohesive health care, no universal health care, no Medicare for all, that means that if you don't have money, you don't get good health care. If you don't have money, you live in an area most likely that has poorer education and poorer schools because education and the amount of funding for schools is pegged to the local property values in every area. Right? If you live in a poor area, you don't have access to the best food and the best nutrition. You probably live near a food desert. You probably don't have access to nutritious food. So all those things compound the, the misery. Right? And then you also have, when you get into the hospital, they believe that black people especially somehow can take more pain, don't need as much painkiller. This is all stuff you can look up. Uh, to this very day, doctors still give black people less pain medication and in general, less treatment because of just old stuff they have in their heads from bad science that has been passed around since the 15, 16, 1700s when they were trying to prove that black people were not the same thing as other humans so that they could justify our enslavement. Uh, and this is, again, not conjecture. This is all stuff that you can look up. It's verifiable. So there are a lot of factors contributing to the higher numbers for black deaths from COVID-19. But another one is actually something that's sort of interesting and uh, based on science. So it's not just the institutional racism and the other bullshit. There's actually just one thing that is a part of us being us. So the more melanin you have, the more protected you are against the sun. Ordinarily, that's a great thing. We, you know, suffer less from skin cancers and things of that nature, et cetera, et cetera. But as more and more time goes by and more science comes out, it appears, and again, I am, I am not a scientist nor a doctor, but I have been following scientists and doctors from multiple countries, and um, I actually, I'll post a couple of links wherever this appears so that you can investigate this for yourself and hear some of the things that I've heard. But at any rate, there is some new science that hasn't been fully confirmed but is strongly correlated, which shows that vitamin D has an effect on protecting your immune system from SARS-CoV-2, the coronavirus. And if you have more melanin, you have a very, very high chance, at least in America, of being vitamin D deficient. Why is that? Well, if your skin is made to block sunlight, right, because you are from an equatorial place where there's lots of strong sunlight all day long, well, you don't need to absorb as much vitamin D as possible, right? But the problem is that when you come to the temperate zone, and you're also wearing clothes and you're inside most of the day, all that stuff, you're just not getting enough sun to break through the melanin, basically, and get you the vitamin D that you need. So there's a good chance that you're vitamin D deficient. I myself went to the doctor just for a routine checkup in January, um, or it was maybe early February, just I had a feeling that it was a good idea just to go and get a checkup. And I found that I was, in fact, vitamin D deficient. 
uh, and I eat a pretty healthy diet, and I mean, I'm outside a lot, or at least was uh, outside, you know, up to eight hours a day or so walking with dogs. So it's not that I wasn't getting enough sunlight or, you know, as much sunlight as one could get living in the area that we live in. So I was prescribed every week of vitamin D by my doctor. So that puts me in a better position, according to at least this particular information. And uh, thankfully, I don't have any of the other risk factors. But black folks, go out right now and get yourself some vitamin D pills. Okay, take 5000 IUs a day, just do it. Even if it turns out that the correlation with vitamin D and its effect on protecting you from coronavirus is not a thing, it still will have a world of effect on your, your general health and vitality, and it, it's good for your bones, and it's good for your energy levels. It's good for a lot of things. Vitamin D apparently is, I mean, it's a vitamin, but when it's in the body, it also acts sort of as like a hormone. It does a lot of great stuff. Um, there was a woman on Rogan recently, um, and don't start with me about uh, Joe Rogan. I know he's problematic as fuck, but he has a lot of great people on there, and they have a lot of great conversations, which should be heard, despite the fact that he is an extremely imperfect uh, vessel <laughs> for the messages that get received. But anyway, um, Dr. Rhonda Patrick is her name, and she is great. And she talks a lot about all of this stuff and a lot about the most recent science. So if you haven't and you uh, aren't, if you aren't wildly averse to Joe Rogan, and if you are, I understand, uh, you can go straight to her page. She basically shows her work uh, in terms of what she's talking about with vitamin D. Another thing, black folks, in addition to the vitamin D, don't be brave about this. Don't be brave when it comes to COVID-19. Don't do it. We have no reason to do it. I heard today in an article that they were talking to people in Georgia that's recently opened back up uh, against all logic and against the CDC and against the WHO, against really all advisement. But they talked to someone and this person said essentially, oh, I've looked at the demographics and I'm not worried. So yeah, this person was probably a younger white dude. So maybe they were talking about age, but I don't think they were just talking about age, right? I don't think it was just age, because yes, more white people are dying from it, but percentage-wise, like, as a percentage of population, white people are not getting it nearly as bad as black people. And I think that especially for young white folks, especially the, I mean, I'm just going to keep it fucking completely real with you, these selfish motherfuckers that want to have a beer more than they care about protecting other people from dying and keep saying dumb shit like, oh, it's just like the flu, or blah, blah, blah. Yo, even if it is, even if it does turn out to be, have the same death rate as the flu, we know what the fucking flu is. We don't know what this is yet, okay? So you can make conjecture and talk about how you're gonna be fine and whatever, whatever, you're healthy, you run, okay. The chance that you're taking for yourself is one thing, but if you're not wearing a fucking mask, you are legitimately a bad human being. And you can get mad at me if you want to for saying that, but it's true, okay? The mask is to protect other people from what you might have. If you're not worried about yourself, that's fine. That's fine. But if you're not willing to wear a mask to protect other people, it's airborne, okay? It is airborne or functionally airborne, right? We talked before in a previous podcast about how it's not actually carried on air particles. It's carried in small water droplets, that are functionally airborne because they're passed just by the water vapor that comes out of you when you speak is enough to pass along the coronavirus. So 
we don't know yet. Also, y'all, we're in the first wave of this. If you're a patron, I'm going to post some graphs and things that I've seen from, from the Spanish flu that showed me what we're in for when it comes to the second wave of this. Okay. In the Spanish flu, the first wave was, I mean, it was bad, right? But it wasn't terrible. The second wave was just, I mean, if you look at just the graph, it's unbelievable how much worse the second wave is than the first. And yes, we don't know the full science. We don't know the full accurate death rates. We don't know, you know, we don't know, we don't know anything, right? And that's the big problem. The uncertainty is the problem. And that's why I'm saying, especially for you, black folks, don't be brave about this. Because we don't know what's going to happen. We do know that we're getting it worse, whether it's, whether it's because of the fucked up way that society treats us or because there is, you know, something like the vitamin D factor or other factors we don't know about, right? There's no reason to just be cavalier about this. And you know what? We need to stay alive, okay? We need to stay alive. We need to not be dying from this. More of us are essential workers. More of us have no choice but to be out there one way or the other. More of us live in more packed environments, in cities, right? So all of those factors mean that we're going to die more than other people, even if the numbers aren't as bad as they say. But 100,000 people extra dying this year, people are like, oh, well, the flu kills more or like, you know... Or other rhetorical, you know, and, and highly sophistical pieces of bullshit like, oh, well, there's just, you got to take chances and there's risks and it's dangerous to do anything, whatever. That's 100,000 extra people that died this year, right? The, the other factors are still killing people. And now we've added that to this. And, and that's just the beginning. Because mark my words, I'm making this another one of my official predictions. And I, I made a bunch of these predictions before I started the podcast, but this is the first one I'm going to be making on the podcast. And I want you to remember this. And hey, if it turns out I'm wrong, light up my Twitter mentions and ridicule me mercilessly. And I will be all too happy to admit that I was wrong. But the second wave of this, when it is compounded with the fact that there is going to be so much more food insecurity... And then the seasonal flu and the general stress levels that are elevated and stress has a very negative effect on your immune system, right? And the fact that SARS-CoV-2 will have been spread even more, right? It will be all over the place by then. Whereas right now, it's still spreading and it's being helped. It's being aided and abetted by these fucking morons that want to have a beer more than they want to protect somebody's life. Fuck those people. I saw a picture from the Upper East Side from a couple days ago, and listen, it was like 95% white folks with the same sort of mentality as, as this dude from the article I mentioned. Where they're just like, you know what, whatever, I'm young, I'm healthy, like, I don't really care, but... What they're doing is they're spreading. It's spreading, spreading, spreading. I saw another article recently about someone who went to a Mother's Day church service, which was fucking stupid, and they spread the disease to 180 people. It's beyond irresponsible, right? Beyond irresponsible to the point where it's, it's downright kind of evil. It's straight up fucked up to do this to people. And when the second wave comes around, there will be a lot of wailing and gnashing of teeth, <laughs> as, as the Christians say, when it comes to, you know, catastrophic and terrible events. And so much of it could have been prevented. Just like so much of the dying in New York State could have been prevented if we had decided to be a little bit less brave about it and had closed up one week earlier, just one week. And we would have, there's no way of knowing, but the estimation is that there would be at least half the deaths there are now if we had closed up one week earlier. But this country is so hell-bent on refusing to give the people the kind of help and bailouts that it gives to corporations, like flinging it out. They're popping out, you know, these bailouts like they're Pez, but I still haven't gotten a stimulus check. And everywhere that I go, 
whether it's Twitter or people I'm talking to on Instagram, etc., etc., that is not an uncommon story. Lots and lots of people have not gotten their, their first stimulus check yet. That first $1,200 pittance that was supposed to have taken us through these two months. Right? They don't care about us. We know this. So black folks, look, I know that you probably have to do something to make money. Right? A lot of us don't have those deep savings. We don't have family to fall back on. We can't just, you know, flee the city to go move in, back in with our parents, some suburban place where there's a low population density. So here's what I need you to do. A, get that vitamin D. No jokes, please. I know I said vitamin D a lot. And I, every time I say it, I think it, I got a dirty mind. What are we going to do? But get, get it. 5,000 IUs a day. Eat more fresh vegetables. Get more fresh produce. Add more of it to your diet. Get yourself an N95 mask, okay? They're not everywhere, but you can find them. They're not, as, they're not in as short a supply as they used to be, right? Not just the cloth mask. Get yourself an N95 mask. Cloth masks don't really block the virus from getting to you that well, but N95s do. So get one of those. What I do actually is I wear an N95 with a cloth mask over it to give the mask more longevity, right? Because I don't have that many of them, but I have, you know, I have a stash that I got, of course, before this because I'm a prepper, which you should be now if you're not, right? Just a quick note on that. If, speaking of predictions, if I haven't convinced you yet that you should be a prepper, and if this time has not yet convinced you that you should be a prepper, I don't know what to say, right? <laughs> if you can't be convinced by the unfolding of an actual pandemic and an unfolding worldwide catastrophe that you should have supplies and things ready for the next time this happens. And, and let's keep this straight. This is the very beginning of this. We are still in the rising phase of this particular series of catastrophes. And it's going to be a compounded interlocking set of catastrophes, right? This is not going to be over soon. And the economic catastrophe, even if we get a vaccine or something that gets rid of COVID next week, the economic impacts of this are going to be felt for a very long time. So look, whenever you do your shopping, first of all, think long term. Don't just think about the next week, two weeks, however often you go shopping. Think about every time you go shopping, what can I put in my closet? Even if it's just like a bunch of cans, right? And at dollar stores, they usually have cheap cans of beans, you know, black beans, red beans, great stuff. Handle your business, folks. Seriously, put something away because times are going to get tough. The numbers now on unemployment are unprecedented. And that's the people that have been able to get through. There's still people that haven't been able to get through, right? Remember, any numbers we have right now are behind. That's how data collection and science works. Whatever we know now is out of date. Whatever we know now is true as of when that data was collected and aggregated and, and you know, and compiled to put out. Also, I'm still looking into this because I need to... I need to have the strongest case possible for it, but I guarantee you that the death numbers are low. They are not too high. They are low. Because a lot of people are choosing not to go to hospitals, and people that are dying at home, they aren't necessarily counting as COVID-19 deaths. And there's a lot of people who are doing that, especially among poor and immigrant populations, and people also who just don't want to die alone in a hospital, which I totally understand, right? It sounds terrible. Uh, on Democracy Now!, they had a person who was talking about how, you know, they, they go in there with a tablet or a phone or whatever, and they hold it up to the sick person so that they can say goodbye to their families on the phone. Who wants that? I mean, that, that sounds hideous, right? Folks, and I'm talking to all of all the proletariat, you know what I mean? All of the poor folks, 
all the underclass, all of us that are not wealthy, don't do anything that they tell you to do if you know that it's going to put you at greater risk. Don't do it. Refuse to do it. If you got to start a strike, start a strike. Okay? And make use of all of the things at your disposal, right? Don't be brave about it. Don't be too proud to accept help, right? If you need food assistance, whatever you need, you get it. Go get it. Because we want you alive. And we know that those rich folks with their freezers full of ice cream are going to be fine. And they're also not trying to help us out. We got to help each other out. And the way that we do that, first and foremost, is realizing, A, this is a systematic failure. This is a systemic failure. This is not on us individually. We have been failed by our government. And that includes the government of New York. I don't understand why people are still thinking Cuomo is doing a good job of this. He has been terrible. And he cut Medicaid in the middle of this crisis. And I read another great article recently about one of the reasons that we didn't close up earlier is because he and de Blasio were having a war over who gets to decide if a city closes. Can you fucking imagine the ego of these two men? I mean, Cuomo, especially in this case, like I got no love for de Blasio, especially for the fact that he won't stand up to the NYPD and how they've been beating the fuck out of black people and, and brown people during this pandemic. While on the Upper East Side and the West Village, white folks are congregating like it's, you know, a fucking jamboree. But in this case, Cuomo fucked us badly just because of his ego. That dude is no good, to put it mildly. Okay, folks, don't be brave about this. Let the people that want to look, if if they want to go out and party, let them, you know, and just stay away from them. And if they are coming into your place of business and acting a fool, refuse to serve them. Walk away. Walk away. Someone got spitted on and they died of COVID because this person had it knowingly and spit on them at their their place of work. Okay? When I say be safe out there, I'm talking about be safe from these people who you know don't give a fuck about you. Not to put too fine a point on this next bit, but... There's a long history of people of color being fucked over by disease, brought to them by Europeans that don't give a fuck about them. And that's just history. Now, how that plays into right now, I haven't even wrapped my head around all my thoughts about that. And I'm trying to be charitable before I do make any sort of coherent thought process on that. But what I do know is this. They don't care about you. And I'm talking about specifically the wealthy right now. So the only thing we can do is lean on each other. And for my part, what I'm saying, and I'm saying this with my whole heart, if you have to quit your job, quit it, okay? We need you alive. That seven o'clock cheer is not going to save your life, okay? Get you a good mask. Get you the best food you can. Get the most rest you can. Get you some vitamin D. All that stuff. And do the best you can to keep yourself alive. And and by the way, when you're wearing your mask outside, don't have it so your nose is out, right? I know they're uncomfortable, but I'm not a superhuman person or anything. But the second I leave my house until I come back, it does not come off. And you can say I'm too fearful or whatever, but fuck all that. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not out here trying to die for anybody, okay? So I'm going to do the very best I can to stay alive so that I can continue to do the things that I do to help other people. It's not just about me. So let me sum up before I get going too far. But really, be safe, people, and stay away from people you know who are taking too many chances. Just stay away from them. Because on the real, they're showing you the kind of people they are. Do you think I don't want to go out and just lay in the sun and just go hug a bunch of people? You know, go smooch people, go to a play party, you know, go to a club and like, and dance until they kick me the fuck out of there. 
Of course I do. Of course I do. We all do. But this ain't the time for that. We got to be adults about this. Right? There will be joy in the future. There will be all that kind of thing in the future. There will be no going back to the way things were. But there will be times when we can go and feel safer to be around each other in groups in the future. But it ain't now and it ain't soon. I'm thinking spring of 2021 at earliest. So put that in your head as a time frame. Just so as things keep unfolding, you're not consistently disappointed. A year from now, think about that as when at least the COVID-19 part of all this will have been in some way dealt with. That's going to do it for now. Thank you, as always, for listening, and please do help me spread the word about the podcast and about the Patreon. I'm finally hitting my stride with content, lots of new stuff coming out, more garden content, music content, and some, some more personal stuff. I'm really enjoying being a creator again, and with your help, I can continue doing that through this and beyond. Patreon.com slash Focused on Infinity. You can also find me on Instagram at Focused on Infinity, and on Twitter, at Watcher Infinite. Really, stay safe, and don't be brave, okay? Because I want you alive. And I'm sure everyone around you that loves you wants that as well. Even if you've got a low chance of dying, I don't want you to be the one, okay? Much love. Grand Love.